Oh, is everyone okay? Great, we're live. Thank you. Welcome everyone to the uh, last event in our World Consumer Rights Day series and uh, the main event because today is World Consumer Rights Day and I'm so happy to have all of you here with us joining us in celebration of consumer rights in an AI age. We've had an exciting program this week covering all sorts of topics that we will we'll dig into shortly. But before we get there, I want to give everyone a brief note on the interpretation and captioning that's available so that you can join and listen in, in in the language that is most helpful for you. At the bottom of your Zoom menu, you will see an interpretation option. We're running this session in English, but you can choose to listen in any of Arabic, Spanish or French. You just need to hit the, uh, the right button for you. At the bottom of the screen, you'll also see a CC button for closed captioning. Uh, if you press on that, you'll also be presented with options uh, that you can enable uh, for, for, for captioning this session. But thank you for, uh, for bearing with us as we got started just a couple of minutes late today. Uh, I, I hope that you've all had an empowering and exciting World Consumer Rights Day week. Uh, and that I and that you were able to join in with many of the sessions that we uh, that we hosted this week. We kicked off on Tuesday with a exciting uh, but also concerning discussion on the uh, the growing uh, problem and challenge of scams, deepfakes, and misinformation, and how those challenges are uh, likely to be exacerbated by generative AI. But we also heard during that session some of the solutions that. Uh, that the technology presents, as well as uh, what other companies, consumer advocates, and regulators are doing uh, to ensure that, that they have a handle on, on that issue. We also did a deep dive on data policy and the role of data in uh, building uh, generative AI models. We had a fascinating discussion that was supported by speakers from the Hong Kong Consumer Council, from the FTC, uh, as well as the Mozilla Foundation, uh, who shared incredible research that they've been doing uh, on the the opportunity uh, and and some of the the questions that, that are still pending around privacy uh, and data policy as generative AI uh, develops. Yesterday we had a session presenting some new insight on behalf of Consumers International. This was an exercise that many of you uh, participated in uh, to test generative AI chatbots and we we released a preview of that research in the meeting yesterday. Now today, I'm so happy and excited for us to celebrate and underline uh, the consumer rights that we all have uh, today. These are the things that, uh, that result in a safe, fair and sustainable marketplace for consumers around the world everywhere. So I'm delighted uh, to have so many members and other supporters uh, from all, all corners of the globe with us today in recognition and in support and solidarity of, of consumer rights everywhere. So today is going to be really an opportunity just for us to meet, listen, learn from each other and hear what um, so many of you have been doing to support the theme of fair and responsible AI for consumers, as well as uh, understand some of the activities that you've been running in your own countries and regions and with consumers uh, to, to underline and champion their rights. So thank you for joining us today and thank you uh, for the work that you do every day to, to support consumers. Yesterday, we heard from the Secretary General of the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, UNTAD, uh, that's Rebecca Greenspan. She joined us live yesterday to give uh, a welcome message and address to Consumers International members on the theme of fair and responsible AI. We would really like to show that message again because it, it underlines so many of the uh, important things not just on this theme, but on, on consumer empowerment in general. So in, in just a moment, we'll show that video uh, so that those of you that weren't able to join yesterday will, will also be able to listen. Here it is. And once we've listened to this, we'll come back and, and hear from, from several of our members and other speakers about what this theme means to them. Thank you. So we're in, I don't think we're getting audio on that video. Um, let's just make sure that we can start again.
Okay, it seems like we can't hear the, the audio on Rebecca Greenspan's video. So why don't we try and come back to that in a moment when um, uh, when we fix that that uh, that problem. Uh, thanks for bearing with us. Instead, let's go uh, first to, to hear from some of our members and other speakers, and we'll come back to that video and, and I can talk a little bit about uh, some, of, some of my takeaways that, that I took from that yesterday. Um, I know that we have uh, Michael Mungoma with us from the Youth Education Network. I wanted to start with Michael today. So Michael, I'm going to, um, I'm going to ask you to start your video and, uh, and come off mute so that you can share with us you know, there's different ways of, of doing this. You can tell us what does fair and responsible AI mean to you. You can tell us what's happened uh, for World Consumer Rights Day this week, uh, where you are, uh, or you can share something else on the theme. This is really a chance for all of us to to learn and listen from each other. So, Michael, uh, over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Stefan, and uh, happy World Consumer Rights Day to everyone. Um, calling you from Kenya, and I think I'm so privileged to have this opportunity just to share a little bit of uh, our insights around AI. For I think for as a country, AI is something that is still um, new, but for the region, um, I must say that a lot of, uh, well, not a lot, but a few African countries, especially Kenya, Nigeria, Ghana, Ethiopia, South Africa, have uh, successfully deployed AI solutions at scale, you know, uh, targeting sectors like the financial services, agriculture, and healthcare. And um, you know that um, these still remains limited. There's still opportunities there, but from a consumer point of view, it's important that um, even as we commemorate, we, we try and look at what existing structures are there for us, um, I'll come back again to Kenya. I think um, we don't have uh, the framework yet. I mean, it's not because there's reluctance. I think it's just uh, an evolving space. So we have um, already proposals, uh, like what we have is the robotics and uh, the artificial intelligence bill, something that is still being discussed. But as consumer organizations, I think we're taking a very, very keen interest uh, because the, 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 what is unique about it is we already have AI deployed and then that's when you know legislation and all other frameworks are coming into play. But I mean, globally, I think with, with cross-border, trans-border porosity, I think it's important to have really this discussion because we can't, you know, we can't really block people from accessing. We can't people uh, block people from enjoying uh, some of these AI, um, you know, opportunities. But at the same time, take cognizance of the fact that uh, some of the risks that are associated with that, those are that those that are documented, those that are not documented, again, uh, play an integral role in uh, shaping uh, how we move into the next phase of AI continentally and uh, globally. Um, now, the, for, for, I think for Africa and a lot of other uh, continents across uh, the world, you know, opportunities such as just flood forecasting, climate change is coming in strong. If we're able to get consumers to really appreciate and understand, how this can um, enhance how they live, how they access commodities, how they're able to determine pricing, how they're able to determine whether there's fairness or unfairness, not just in AI, but in the consequences or the products of AI, whether prediction, food security, infra infrastructure planning. I think these are things that are really coming to you know, the common person out here in, even in the, in the you know the the, the um, middle income countries, we we have all these tools. Whether it's using some of the navigation tools on our handsets, 
Um, Africa is known very well in terms of um, uh, adopting and um, acquiring a lot of digital devices that seem to be quite, uh, you know, technologically advanced. Where does the consumer come in in terms of keeping up with information, making themselves ready for what is there and what is coming? I think these are some of the things that, uh, for me, even just coming into uh, this World Consumer Rights Day today, makes it very, very uh, exciting and uh, something that I'd like to, you know, just interact further with uh, my colleagues. Thank you. Thanks so much, Michael. Uh, interesting to hear how, how many different issues you've covered there and, and amazing to to understand the importance of, of this technology to uh, not just the digital economy, but other parts of the economy as well. So thank you so much for sharing those perspectives. Um, I'll let other participants know that if you'd like to say something, please do feel free to jump in. Uh, we we have assigned some speakers already, but many of you can uh, can do so simply by raising your hand and we'll call on you, we'll bring you in to, so you're visible on, on video and everyone can hear you. I can see people already doing that, so thank you so much. Um, before we before we go to some of the those that have raised hands, I'd like to see if uh, Felicia Monnier is available. Uh, Felicia, we uh, we had prepared for you to speak, so I am uh, asking you to start your video and and come off mute and share your perspective on all reactions to what Michael has said uh, on on the theme of fair and responsible AI for consumers. Hello, uh, Stephen. Thanks a lot for this opportunity. And uh, I, I had to cancel my uh, other engagements to be able to participate in this uh, webinar. And I'm happy to do that. Uh, of course, I always prioritize uh, CI activities. And what I want to say, um, just like Mike uh, stated in Nigeria, uh, things are just unfolding, but uh, you know, we have many people, many educated uh, youth, and just like any other technology, many of them have already keyed into some of these uh, AI platforms like chatbots and all that. But now I'm talking uh, about what Nigeria as a country is doing. First, I must note that Nigeria does not have any dedicated law yet to regulate AI, but the country is making uh, conscious efforts to uh, key into the process. And some of the uh, measures taken by the federal government uh, won the establishment of the Federal Ministry of uh, Communications, Innovation, and Digital Technology. That's a very good step that will help to enshrine the principles of uh, AI. Then there's already a center, National Center for uh, artificial intelligence and robotics. And of course, there are other dedicated agencies like NETA. NETA is National Information Technology Development uh, Agency. So all these agencies are working. In fact, there's already a blueprint, maybe I should say a draft uh, blueprint on artificial intelligence. And uh, this center that I mentioned, the National Center for Artificial Intelligence and Robotics, is really working hard, working with the youth, working, working with uh, different uh, sectors. And of course, the ministry that I mentioned, the Federal Ministry of Communications, Innovation and Technology and Digital Economy is also working. So one interesting thing is that Nigeria is very much interested in this uh, artificial intelligence. And even, even uh, people generally in Nigeria, on Monday, the national station, radio station, uh, Radio Nigeria, broadcast my news commentary on artificial intelligence, where I explain the meaning of artificial intelligence and um, other, um, other related um, uh, principles. And since that time, people have been calling me um, to share my, to share their views and to say, uh, yes, yeah, this is, uh, this is good. So we, are, we, we know that people are interested and with the interest uh, that uh, the public, members of the public are showing and even the government 
to show you. We believe that we find that uh, we should have a roadmap. And actually, in that news uh, commentary, I stress the need to have sector specific policies that will aid innovation, development, and uh, protect the overall interest of consumers. Uh, I can also assure you that uh, consumer uh, organizations will be ready to work with these agencies because we don't want a situation that uh, the process will be developing and the majority of the people will not know what it's all about. So that is the uh, summary of, of course, I've been in granting interviews explaining this yesterday. I have granted interviews to one radio uh, station in Enugu explaining the import of this uh, AI and the fact the news is still on and it's been on throughout uh, today in the, in the major news. And even the countdown we did, we also explained the, uh, what the country is doing, what CI is doing, CI in particular. The, the countdown, uh, we started the countdown on Monday this week and ended it today. And we explained different aspects of uh, AI, the team of the World Consumer Rights Day, and uh, what we need to do as consumers, as government and other uh, uh, stakeholders. But in all, in all, we have been emphasizing the need for consumer awareness because many people are not even aware of this. I was surprised when an educated colleague of mine called me and said uh, that, uh, Felicia, this is very technical that I listened to your news commentary. I, it was difficult for me. I am um, understanding most of those things, you know, artificial intelligence, generative uh, AI and all that. So if such a person could say, you can imagine the average person not to talk about the rural uh, jail and science. The, the, the funny thing or is, is, is that I think we may just have lost uh, Felicia there. Uh, Felicia, ah, we can see you again. Uh, we, you may have just frozen at the end there, but but um, first, if you can see and hear us, I'll say thank you for uh, rearranging your schedule to be with us uh, today. Uh, truly appreciate your commitment and uh, and dedication to not just what you've done this week, which we've heard about, uh, but also joining the discussion today uh, and, and for rearranging things at short notice. So thank you. You talked about the theme of collaboration and that was something that really was underlined uh, by so many of the of the speakers during our sessions this week, uh, especially in uh, in the government sector. We had we heard from the FTC and the, the Federal Trade Commission in the United States and the Competition and Markets Authority in the UK. Both of those organizations really stressed the need to work more closely with consumer advocates uh, and consumer associations, not just in the reporting of challenges, but in the development of solutions as well. So you've, you've touched on something uh, very important there. I, I, I'll i just move on to, um, to another part of the world um, because we're ready, I think, to hear from Amy Kato in, in Japan. She represents uh, Consumers Japan. Uh, Amy, we, we're grateful for, for you uh, being here as well. It's, it's evening Japan time, so thank you. And uh, we're excited to hear about uh, the, a, a different perspective on this issue as well. Please, Amy. Thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to join this session. Um, my name is Amy Kato from Consumer Rights Japan, and I'll just make a short comment on the perspective from Japanese consumer advocate. Um, when I think about the responsible AI and data protection, um, I think it's very important to see them from the fundamental rights and human rights perspective. Uh, the Japan Japanese government have just started to have discussion for rebuilding the consumer law as human rights perspectives. And some of the Japanese constitutional scholars have begun to point out that the consumer law lacks a constitutional perspective. This is a big step for Japanese consumer law to be more comprehensive. Um, to be honest, 
Um, Japan's traditional consumer groups and also the civil society have not been able to raise the concerns about the threat from the generative AI. And surprisingly, many Japanese consumers tend to enjoy the everyday life with the AI robots, um, like if you know Sony Aibo, which is a famous family dog robot. This is the unique point of the Japanese culture, and some of the panelists in the day two session said the same thing about the children's toy. And many of the consumers don't read the terms and conditions, privacy policy, and we always agree everything and I click yes so many times and we cannot recognize the serious risk. And the problem is that the Japanese government and the industry are taking the lead in establishing legislation and self-regulation without consumers' participation. And this is one of the big problems in Japan. The other day, one of the government policymaker asked me that um, if there were any survey on consumer awareness or on, da on data protection or generative AI, but unfortunately, I didn't have the data at the time, so I'm very excited to know the results of the survey conducted by Consumers International, which is very meaningful for all of us. And also, I'm looking forward to joining the RightsCon Summit in South Korea in February 2025, next year, and which is a very big conference for the human rights. And I would like to do something for consumers' data protection or generative AI with CI and consumer groups in South Korea. Thank you very much. Thanks, Amy. Thanks, Amy, for, for offering your support uh, and for, for sharing your perspective. Yes, those of you that, that were able to listen yesterday would have heard a brief preview of some of um, some of the results from that that survey, the the exercise that thirty five members participated in, uh, and please do look out for the full report, which is coming in mid April, just to give a, a flavour of those. Uh, we we saw that really that there are a lack of quite uh, basic safeguards in place when it comes to generative AI chatbots, and that there was a very uh, strong concern coming through from members on behalf of consumers about the risk of these technologies. We will try and uh, return to the video of uh, Rebecca Greenspan from UNCTAD. Uh, hopefully the, the audio is working now. It's visible on your screen, so let's give it a go. So the, the, the video is still uh, having some audio challenges. Rights and happy world's consumers' right day is something to be celebrated. And the civil society has such a huge role to play in this area. And uh, you know, we, we forget, uh, we have forgotten so many times, you know, the role that consumers rights and a competition I think we're going to try and stop that unfortunately we, we've had some some real issues with uh, with the video today I'm so sorry about that um Rebecca Greenspan yesterday she she talked about so many important issues that connect to World Consumer Rights Day to your work and to the the theme of fair and responsible and AI, um, one of the and one so of the. Sorry, uh, one of the one of the uh, issues that Rebecca Greenspan talked about was the intersection of competition and consumer protection, and how both of those are really the foundation of a strong economy, not just that delivers growth but that works for people. Uh, she talked about how AI is, is really a story of contrasts, and uh, she she gave a, a wonderful quote from, from Charles Dickens to, to share her own uh, feelings around that, but really she was underlining the promise and the opportunity of this technology and how it has to come with 
with risk mitigation and protections. Um, what was what was important to see as well was that the the message of meaningful and equitable access, which we heard about from uh, from Michael as well at the beginning, and this just the the real challenges that uh, that we face in navigating this world. There were four takeaways that I'll highlight, and then what we'll try and do is share um, share a link to the video that that you can watch later, uh, and and hopefully with more success. The four takeaways that Rebecca Greenspan, the Secretary General of UNCTAD, underlined yesterday were the need to empower consumers and policymakers with AI literacy. So, so not just uh, letting the technology uh, be released on the world, but actually helping people and decision makers understand how it's how it is built, how it's made, how it's managed, and both the limitations and the the promise of the technology. The second point she mentioned was the the importance of supporting countries in developing national strategies for AI. So strategies that encourage the technology to develop and encourage industry to, to innovate, uh, but, but at the same time, making sure that those are, that happens in line with, with global principles. And here she referenced the importance of the UN guidelines on consumer protection as a very uh, critical framework for uh, for global values and global principles that can be applied to this technology. The third takeaway from Rebecca Greenspan was engaging the private sector, which we'll come to in a moment. Um, and then lastly, she, she talked about advocating for transparency, accountability and inclusivity. So really important messages there. Um, and uh, and while, while I leave you with that, I'm going to ask uh, Alex or Alexander uh, Jacquet, who is joining us from uh, from the private sector, actually, and I, and I do appreciate Alex that you're with us uh, because it's important that this the World Consumer Rights Day is not just uh, civil society, but but others, other stakeholders, uh, underlining the importance that importance of this message and also sharing uh, what they're doing. So, Alex, tell us what who you are, what your company does, and and how it relates to this theme, please. You're just on mute. Sorry, Alex. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Stefan. Um, my pleasure to be here. So my name is Alex Jacquet, and I am the founder and CEO of Trusting Pixels. Trusting Pixels helps organizations detect fake retouched images and videos of people. So a big part of the reason why we reached out to Consumers International and other consumer authority organizations is because we've been running our software on advertisements and the results have been alarming as you can imagine. Now, let me start by saying that we're not just running it on random advertisements. We've been running it on advertisements that claim to have no editing, no retouching. And that's just one example of the type of misleading, fraudulent types of advertisements we've been running our software on. Now, seeing these results, from our software, we've realized that not enough is being done to protect consumers. So we hope to collaborate with consumer authorities of the world, governments, and especially brands to bring a safer, better protected advertising experience for consumers. And now bringing this back to consumers and what this week means for us, um, we one thing that we heard repeatedly throughout this week, Michael just touched up on, on this as well, um, was really how can we, meaning everyone on this call, government entities, um, how can we leverage the same technology we're fighting, but to our benefit? Essentially, the point that was trying to be made was why can't we, meaning governments, authorities, innovate using artificial intelligence? And that's exactly what Trusting Pixels is doing. We're leveraging AI to detect fake content instead of using it to create fake content. Now, the reason I bring that up is because we are nowhere near as big as some of these organizations on here on this call, but we can have a tremendous impact. For us, going directly to the consumer doesn't make nearly as much sense because we don't have that large impact government bodies and regulators have. So to me, this week and this day, though it is about protecting consumers, 
realistically, we know that we can help them best by helping organizations who can have much more pull and much more impact than us. Thank you, Alex. That's a, a really nice way to, um, to underline other aspects of what World Consumer Rights Day is. And we did hear in, in some of the sessions this week that consumer education and awareness is, is critical, uh, but it can't be the only thing. And I think that is something that our members uh, reiterate to us uh, very frequently because they all know the importance of working with, with businesses and with others to you know, stop uh, harms from happening and empower consumers. So, so thanks for joining us. I know it's early your time uh, on, on the West Coast of North America. So appreciate that. And uh, and I really recognize the, the global nature of this of the discussion and the global nature of this challenge. Um, I'll remind uh, anyone who is an attendee and would like to speak, please raise your hand and we'll, we'll do our best to call on you. Uh, we also have a Q&A function if you would like to just pose a question there to uh, myself or any of the other um, speakers we've heard from today, and, and we'll try to bring those into the discussion. Uh, so the Q&A, that's at the bottom of your Zoom menu. Uh, and if you'd like to raise your hand, you will also, also see a, a little hand icon. You just need to hit that button and, and we'll bring you in. Uh, while you're thinking about that and, and thinking about what you'd like to share with the group, uh, we're going to try and show uh, the Secretary General of ISO, the International Standards Organization, who also delivered a message in support of World Consumer Rights Day uh, and was very keen to be here with the members, but unfortunately the schedule didn't work out. So we, we're showing, we, we're going to show uh, Sergio Munga's video right now. Um, and uh, I, I will remind you again that you can uh, raise your hand if you'd like to uh, speak or, or react to anything you've heard after this video. Thank you. We live in a fast moving, interconnected world. New technologies such as artificial intelligence are transforming the way people do business, collaborate and consume information. But how do we ensure that we unlock AI's full potential? This World Consumer Rights Day focuses on fair and responsible AI for consumers. And international standards offer solutions to achieve positive societal outcomes and build consumer trust in AI. The pace of technology and advances in AI is astonishing. Regulations is struggling to keep up. International standards build trust. They act as a framework on which AI systems are developed, used and regulated. They underpin and complement regulations, providing guardrails for responsible, safe, and trustworthy AI development. AI has the potential to revolutionize our societies and economies. It offers significant benefits to consumers. Already, it is enabling huge advances in medical research and diagnostics. The explosion of generative AI tools has given consumers better access to information and promises enormous leaps in productivity. AI can also ensure that goods and services, from transportation to energy use, are safer and more adapted to our needs. With these benefits come real risks. False content about goods and services along with general misinformation, fake news, threaten to undermine the consumer experience. Potential biases can exhibit gender, racial, and other stereotypes. This can in some cases result in reduced access to goods and financial services. In addition, misuse of data can lead to the manipulation of consumers. Looking at how AI risk impacts consumers is crucial to ensure the responsible and sustainable deployment of AI technologies. More than ever, Business today need a framework to guide them on AI journey. ISO IC 42001, the world's first AI management system standard, meets this need. This groundbreaking standard offers a systematic approach to the challenges associated with AI implementation. It covers areas such as responsible AI, accountability, transparency, and data privacy. In addition, ISO has developed a range of other innovative standards covering the entire AI ecosystems. 
This address everything from terminology to managing and evaluating quality in AI systems. Thanks to ISO's consensus-based development process, our standards reflect the need of a diverse range of global stakeholders. Consumers can bring use cases that demonstrate the real-time impact for AI technology in people's everyday lives and highlight its potential. The ISO system provides a neutral platform open to everyone by means of engagement with our members' bodies or through liaison relationships. The consumer voice in standards is strengthened by ISO's Committee on Consumer Policy, ISO COPOLCO. We welcome and encourage consumer international advocacy and continue collaboration. Through its partnership in standard development, Consumer International plays an important role in designing solutions that respect and protect the rights of all consumers. The future of AI is filled with opportunities. We must advance with foresight to ensure its development is fair and responsible. In doing so, we can protect and empower consumers. Together, we can achieve eyes of vision of making life easier, safer, and better. I hope that you found that interesting and complementary to some of the other um, themes that have come up today. Uh, what's, what's great to see is our connection to so many of the uh, intergovernmental agencies and their appreciation for the work of consumer advocates, uh, as well as the importance of the theme. Um, I am going to bring in uh, Nadeem Iqbal from uh, the network in, in Pakistan. We've heard from Africa, we've heard uh, from Asia, we've heard from North America. And so now let's hear uh, from Nadeem in Pakistan. Uh, Nadeem, we are just bringing you in. I'll ask you to, to start your video if that's possible and, uh, and to come off mute and share your perspective on on World Consumer Rights Day. Hello, everyone. Um, uh, well, uh, today it was a good day over here because we started celebrating the uh, Consumer World Consumer Rights Day. Uh, there was a program in the uh, state-owned uh, TV, and there was a live discussions over there. And uh, you know, all these problems have been identified. Uh, what we were struggling were the solutions, like mostly over here, uh, because we are a part of a developing world, the uh, main thing is uh, like ready to implement solutions. So when we see there have had been uh, confusion in the uh, developed world, like in Europe and in America, uh, then the same message also come across over here. Uh, but it's going to be a huge uh, discussion over here. Uh, in addition to that uh, TV, uh, you know, debate, we also have had coverage in the main English newspapers of Pakistan. So the new government is in and we have been able to, you know, the, uh, put uh, our message across and put it on their agenda. Uh, the other thing why uh, this uh, uh, day and this message is very relevant to Pakistan because Pakistan has been uh, putting a lot of effort and uh, uh, we have had a, a youth bulge over here. And, uh, uh, you know, the most, uh, I think we are the second uh, in the world who are providing the freelancers, IT freelancers over here uh, from Pakistan. And now the most, uh, more and more buildings and more and more uh, places are being uh, set up where the youth are being invited to go there and uh, do their uh, freelancing and uh, you know the, uh, send out their services uh, throughout the world so i think uh, you know the, all these platforms are also uh, benefiting from uh, all those uh, things so the message of fair and responsible ai it's the fair is for the consumer and the responsible is for the uh, platforms or the uh, for the service provider so this uh, message has gone across uh, quite clearly, and we are also waiting for the solutions, and uh, we are ready to be part of you know the, this search for the solution. So it's a it's a very good and healthy debate. Thank you, thank you so much, Nadine. I will turn to uh, Maureen Holder. Uh, Maureen's in in Barbados, and uh, she's posed a couple of questions to us in the Q and A, which I think are are worth actually bringing in uh, to the discussion. 
um, while we're doing that, I, I will just summarize uh, what, what Maureen has asked us, which is about representation. Uh, in, in Rebecca Greenspan's video, she talked about the global governance deficit uh, in, in AI. And I think it really speaks to what Maureen is talking about too. There is clearly uh, a lack of inclusivity and representation, and there are many steps uh, that we could take to, uh, to advance that. Uh, so Maureen, I don't know if you're able to join us uh, to, to share your perspectives and your questions and possibly even some solutions uh, with the group. Um, if you are, we, we're we ready to hear from you. Um, Hi, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you. Thank you. Well, I'm saying good morning because it's uh, 8.46 a.m. in Barbados. I had to really get up early this morning to make sure I don't miss this because I wanted to join Consumers International to celebrate uh, World Consumers Day. And the theme you chose is particularly useful uh, because of what is happening in Barbados right now. Uh, we receive information on AI, but it's really frightening. We receive most of it from a very negative point of view and I suspect it's because uh, the people who are sharing the information want to monopolize uh, in a way that they can profit instead of showing us how to navigate, how to use it, helping us to prepare for when it advances in Barbados, they are more or less scaring us. Um, so I thought that you know there has to be another side of AI, a very positive side, where we could use it to navigate, to help build social and economic equalities, uh, help promote social justice, help promote fair and ethical practices with respect to consumers' rights and so on. So what is really missing in Barbados is the ways in which it could be positively used, the way in which we can prepare for its advancement, because it's gonna come, you cannot stop it, right? Now, there's limited AI, and many people in the population, we are unaware. It is here, but we are unaware of its presence because it's so, uh, let's say, hushed and closed. So most of the information that we, we are getting seems like a conspiracy theory rather than it being objective, rather than it, it you know, it, it being, it, it's a we want it, and, and more or less, as the head of the Barbados Consumer Environment Network, we want to be able to share information about AI that will positively impact on consumers, that will positively change the way they think and respond to AI. But protection is important, and we have uh, a long way to go in terms of enacting, amending, um, enforcing our consumer protection legislation. Right now, it has nothing in there for, for consumer protection with respect to AI, with respect to the digital age. So we need my organization. What Why I wanted to come is because I wanted to be armed with information so that I will table to government, this is what you need to do. These, this is the type of legislation that you need to have in place to protect Barbadian consumers as AI advances. So um, I know there's a there's a lack of, of uh, information for developing countries to use and to use positively. And we're not widely represented in international discussion. So I really wanted to hear Miss Greenspan, but I, I, you know, it's not, not working, but I'm sure we'll get her take on it a little later. So thank you for inviting me to share. I appreciate it. No, thanks to you, Maureen. We will try again to show uh, Re Rebecca Greenspan's video uh, towards the end. I think we may have solved the, the audio issue, but I want to make sure that we have a chance to hear from everyone. And her intervention was slightly longer than, uh, than some of the others. Uh, I want to make sure that we have a chance to hear a global perspective. I would love to hear also uh, any participants in Europe or the Middle East uh, or in Latin America in particular. Um, so please, if you're if you're from one of those regions and, and wanting to share something, raise your hand and we'll come to you. Uh, while, while we're waiting for that, we have another message from the UN Secretary General's Envoy on Technology, Amandeep Gill, 
um Amandeep, uh, this his office is organizing uh, several things. One is related to digital public infrastructure, which is clearly an important tool to improving inclusivity and, and access and openness of technology in general, but also is organizing the high level panel on, on AI governance. Uh, and so very connected and relevant uh, to this theme today. So we'll show Amandeep's video and reminder for, for anyone who does want to raise their hand Please do so, and we'll, we'll come to you after this video. Thanks. Greetings from the United Nations office in New York. This year, the theme for World Consumer Rights Day is Fair and Responsible Artificial Intelligence for Consumers. This theme is especially appropriate for 2024. At the UN, we are leading stronger global digital cooperation to ensure consumer safety. Through our initiatives at the Secretary General's Envoy on Technologies office, we are working towards an empowering digital future for consumers where they can access contextually meaningful products and services. The first step in, this, in reaching this goal is to involve everyone in this conversation. It is a cliche, we are all consumers, and in the digital age, whatever we consume, whether it's a digital product or service or an analog product, we have to contend with the implications of digitization, whether it is accessing uh, a kind of a helpline or engaging with other consumers. The internet, digital platforms have created enormous opportunities for consumers to be more aware of their own rights, be more aware of what products and services bring to the table, what harm they could potentially cause, and what's the best way of using them. At the same time, digital platforms, digital technologies have also created new ways in which consumer rights can be undermined, their data misuse, their privacy undermined. So the challenge of ensuring consumer rights product, uh, protection and consumers' empowerment in the digital age is much more complex. This year at the United Nations, we will convene in the fall for the Summit of the Future. One of the key outcomes at the summit is a global digital compact, which would present a shared vision of an open, free, secure, and inclusive digital future. Artificial intelligence is also on the agenda of the Global Digital Compact. The Secretary General has created an advisory body of global experts from all five regions of the world and covering all stakeholder groups to advance recommendations that can help member states adopt the appropriate decisions at the Summit of the Future. With AI, there is a tremendous opportunity to improve the quality of life. If harnessed responsibly, the areas that could see improvements for consumers include cybersecurity, safety and crime prevention, health, education, government services, food security, agriculture, etc. But this will not happen automatically. We will need focused investments, we will need public private partnerships we would need the right governance so that the opportunities of AI can be realized for all and not just through existing business models. Another key area at the Summit of the Future in the context of the Global Digital Compact is digital public infrastructure. Today, whether you live in the Global North or the Global South, a lot of services become accessible to you through digital public infrastructure. We have recently announced six multi-stakeholder working groups to develop a safeguards framework for digital public infrastructure. This aims to meet the growing demand in countries to build safe and inclusive digital public infrastructure that maximizes benefits while mitigating inherent risks of citizens' behavior being manipulated, citizens being surveilled, or somehow being excluded from accessing services. If we design them well, DPIs can help us unleash the full potential of the digital transformation, empower countries to accelerate progress on the sustainable development goals 
ultimately benefiting all their citizens. In conclusion, I want, to, I want to underline that we need to bring all consumers, wherever they live, into the digital transformation in an empowering and inclusive manner. AI governance in particular would be key to reaching this goal. At the UN, we want to reiterate our commitment to fostering consumer safety through the empowerment of impactful products and services, both digital and analog. And we invite you to join the conversation and follow our progress. Thank you very much and I wish consumers everywhere a happy World Consumer Rights Day. Excellent. Thanks on behalf uh, of Consumers International to both ISO and uh, the UN Office of, uh, of Technology for, for those videos. Uh, Rose Mpofu is our board member and uh, representative of, of the Consumer Council in Zimbabwe. Rose, I saw that you'd raised your hand earlier, so I'm going to try to uh, bring you in uh, as a panelist. I've just uh, given you the option to uh, unmute and uh, and share your video if you're able to. Uh, we'd love to hear your perspective. Uh, we've had a strong African presence today, so thank you all for being here. Uh, Rose, please tell us uh, what's been happening in Zimbabwe uh, this week and uh, what does this day mean to you? I think Rose, we-, Rose, we thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you very much, Ken. Um, we've had a very active week this week. Uh, on Monday, we had the Comesa region meeting and we had 43 participants from across the region. And we received various presentations really talking about the advantages, the goodness that AI is bringing to consumers. Um, we also had discussions on the disadvantages of AI, which can uh, seem to be more if, if the industry is not well regulated. So there is need for standardization of AI so that we enjoy the full benefit of AI and we do not face challenges in terms of security issues, especially uh, nowadays with armed robberies that are um, happening in our countries. And the use of AI can exacerbate those kinds of crimes. So it is important that the space of AI is properly, you know, looked in. And there's need for standardization. I liked very much um, the speech by Sergio from ISO. I think standards will be able to help us to make sure that we we reap the full benefits of AI without having to worry so much about issues of security. At CCZ level, what we have been doing over the month is to carry out awareness programs. We had awareness programs in um, two of our provinces with our key stakeholders attending and consumers got to learn a lot about uh, the digital issues as well as AI issues. And I must say that the celebrations are ongoing. Our um, Celebration is going to happen on the 22nd of March. We've had to shift it from today because there was a big event happening in the country, the signing of performance management by CEOs, and uh, it's a very big event. So we had to postpone our celebrations to the 22nd of uh, March. I would like to wish everyone a happy World Consumer Rights Day. Let's continue the knowledge and sharing um, that we have started. There is a lot that we can learn from each other as development, developing countries as well as the developed countries. We need each other 
to improve the AI space and make lives easier for consumers. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rose. Thank you so much for, the, for speaking and sharing that. It sounds like you've had an exciting and packed week and also that your that, that work will continue into next week. So so that's excellent to hear. Um, we have uh, Rinki Sharma, who's uh, part of our next gen network of consumer advocates. This is uh, our group of young consumer advocates <clears throat> fighting for uh, a better future, not just for themselves, but for everyone. Rinki, thanks for being here. Uh, we're we're ready for for your intervention if if you are too. Hi, am I audible? Yes, we hear you. Thank you. I'm so sorry. I am not uh, able to start my video due to some connectivity issues. I uh, hope that works. No problem. Thank you. We hear you very well. First of all, I would like to wish uh, everyone a very happy World Consumer Rights Day. And I think it's an opportunity for all the consumer advocacy uh, advocates around the world to celebrate whatever we are doing to empower the consumers. And I would like to introduce myself. Uh, hi, everyone. This is Rinki Sharma from Consumer Voice, New Delhi. And... Uh, we are uh, working in the area of consumer advocacy from last 40 years. And uh, on this uh, occasion, I, I congratulate, first of all, to Consumers International for bringing this very important issues up front uh, about the fair and responsible artificial intelligence. Because what, I, what we can see uh, from the... Um, uh, from the technology point of view that how the um, scammers are using artificial intelligence for online scams and uh, in India also we have seen the misuse of technologies like deep fake is uh, issues and also the online uh, how scammers are using the loopholes of the law um, uh, in the field of artificial intelligence. So Consumer Voice is uh, working on finding out the loopholes. And uh, very soon we are going to represent to the government of India uh, regarding the fixing of the loopholes. We have already started the process. In fact, um, there are some research scholars and uh, uh, there are like MPs also who are willing to support to us and uh, we are reaching out. So first of all, we are working on the pool uh, that what resources we have and how we can um, uh, make an environment around it. And we are going to pressurize the uh, relevant um, uh, policy makers in this regard, uh, because what we have seen is the number of uh, online frauds uh, in India are on increase. So um, it's very important for the safety of all the consumers uh, that government should come up with some concrete policy action to fix up the loopholes on artificial intelligence. Uh, so that is one of the area where we are working. And also throughout the, uh, from last one month, we are uh, through social media, we are trying to highlight that how artificial intelligence um, is uh, so there are two uh, like a coin has two sides so same way artificial intelligence has two sides that for, on one side how it is benefiting to the consumers but on the other side how the uh, loopholes are there and how the scammers are using that um, to misuse the overall infrastructure technology infrastructure uh, and the ultimately, uh, it is the consumers who are suffering because of it. And um, the area we are uh, uh, in the uh, in India, the Ministry of Consumer Affairs, in the month of December, have come up with the advisory uh, regarding the dark patterns. So we have collaborated with them to highlight the uh, the about the dark patterns in India, and also we are going to um, push forward for the uh, fixing up about the um, loopholes in artificial intelligence technology, uh, which are um, ultimately harming the consumers. So uh, right now the focus is also not only awareness, but to prepare that how we can push for the policy action uh, in this regard. Uh, 
uh, but awareness is also very important because people are using artificial intelligence, but they don't know that uh, what are the uh, harms are there. So they are very happy that their work is getting completed and they are, they are chatbots to help them. But it is very important for consumers also to understand that the harms of the uh, uh, the artificial intelligence and that is why on one side we are doing the awareness campaigns and on the other side we are pushing for the policy action so hopefully in the um, coming days or maybe weeks i can't say the timeline uh, at this point of time but there will be some concrete action we are expecting thank you thank thanks to you rinky and, and yes critical to understand that both of those things need to happen in parallel it's about uh, it's about consumers knowing and understanding and, and being informed appropriately of, of the opportunities and the risks, but also that, that this has to come uh, in parallel with strong uh, and meaningful policy protection. So thank you so much for underlining that. We'll go to Hen Henry uh, Chimera next. Um, Henry, I, I can see that you're ready to speak. So if you can, if you're also able to share your video, we'd, we'd love to see you, but understand if that's not possible. Thanks for, for being here and tell us uh, what this means to you. Uh, thank you very much all and uh, happy Consumer Rights Day 2024. Uh, colleagues, mm -hmm. it is a great honor. I'm joining you in from uh, Gaborone, uh, Botswana, where I am participating in uh, aspects to do with the Consumer Committee for the African region standardization organization. So where I chair the consumer committee, but uh, first we did recognize that here and we are in a meeting where we are discussing consumer issues and AI was one of the aspects. Having said that, going back to Uganda uh, as a, a country and as a, an organization, uh, we started our journey or with on 4th March, where we had a week where we engaged students in one of the cities, Gulu University. We engaged local governments, we engaged different government officials. So since then we are running a month of activities in different cities, local authorities, schools and, uh, and universities discussing issues to do with AI. In, and bringing in other issues. On this year's theme, as uh, an organization, we topped it up by saying that uh, um, uh, a fair and responsible AI for consumers said no to unsafe products and services. So we have used this theme, rhyming it up and trying to localize AI to day-to-day -to -day activities of consumers not only the knowledgeable and those that are staying in urban areas, but reaching it even out to those in the rural areas, simplifying AI and linking it to their daily lives. Lots of ideas, lots of views have come in and they all zero down to certain aspects. One, policy should be in position to safeguard consumers. There should be coordination to safeguard consumers as they are the users of AI and they are the big laws. Three, all regulatory agencies, uh, businesses need to hear the voices of the consumers in that, that the consumers do not have become victims and AI shouldn't increase on their plight that they are experiencing in different aspects. So this has been a great opportunity for consumers to be in position, even those that are knowledgeable, it is appreciated that they are potential victims of AI once it is not well uh, appreciated, well regulated. Uh, we find that they, uh, and the consumers appreciate in their view that AI is not only a national issue, it is a global issue. So uh, frameworks from a global perspective to be localized to the local perspective would, would be very key. So in that, that when there are issues to do with cross borders, when there are issues to do with extraterritorial aspects, consumers in local environments are well protected. So 
we are trying to bring in and involve as many youth, young consumers as possible to start appreciating the approaches that we bring in responsible and sustainable approaches, consumption, and leading to sustainable production. So briefly, that's what I could share. But we are going to conclude the month with a, a, a breakfast meeting bringing together in Kampala, bringing together the regulators in different organizations. So thank you very much for listening in to me. And I'm going back to the consumer session. And well, thank you. Thanks so much for being here and for sharing uh, during during a, a busy week and amazing to hear uh, the continued action that will be will be happening. Uh, we're going to show Rebecca Greenspan's video uh, for one last time, uh, and I believe this time it should be working. And as we start to wrap up the session, I think she you will hear how her messages reiterate and emphasize so many of the things that that you've all shared with us today. Uh, so I hope it will be a, a useful takeaway uh, for all of you. Uh, after that, I'm, I'll give one one last call for anyone from Latin America who would like to to say anything. Uh, it will be your moment after this video uh, before we close the session. So please uh, let us know if you're willing to speak by by raising your hand. Thank you. Happy World's Consumers' Right Day is something to be celebrated. And the civil society has such a huge role to play in this area. And, uh, you, you know, we, we forget, uh, we have forgotten so many times, you know, the role that consumers' rights and a uh, competition, you know, we, you know that here in ANTAC, uh, the branch that takes care of the consumer uh, rights and consumer protection part is the same that takes also a, a issue on the competition side of, a, a, of a, the economic a market. And we forget so much that this is at the bottom of a good performing economy. Yes, and a good performing not for growth, but for people. And so it's so happy really to be here and to participate today. And Stephen, thank you for moderating and for being with us here also. So dear, dear all, dear consumers, international members, uh, uh, friends, uh, let, me, <laughs> let me say first that uh, when I read uh, the title of today, Fair and Responsible AI for, con for Consumers, I thought again, you know, that we are very much in this Dickens world, yes, uh, uh, when he wrote the tale of two cities, yeah, because in a way, not taking the first phrase of Dickens, but the second one, the follow, uh, the follow one, where he says that it was the season of light, it was the season of darkness, it was the spring of hope, it was the winter of despair. <laughs> and probably when we think about AI, we think about all those things. You know, we think about how to make use of the good part of it, the light part of it that can, you know, help us so much. And I will talk about it. But also we have to, to talk about the risks and the other part of it and, and see how we can mitigate them and regulate them in a way that won't take away the good the good of the technological uh, development so uh, as the, as we celebrate so this uh, world consumers rights day it is fitting that we reflect on this new era of for consumer relations to ensure that ai is fair and responsible for consumers ANTAT as the focal point on consumer protection within the UN, as we said before, is committed to understand the implications of AI for consumer protection. I am delighted uh, to, to uh, you know, to uh, uh, with you discuss such a new theme that has become so important in all the discussions, because the eruption of artificial intelligence in consumers' lives 
has put our societies at a crossroads. As UN Secretary General Guterres acknowledged, AI has the potential to turbocharge global development, from monitoring the climate crisis to breakthroughs in medical research, and it offers new potential to realize human rights, particularly health and education. For consumers, AI holds a huge promise of welfare, convenience, efficiency, efficiencies, and also personalization on services and treatments. Indeed, there is even the promise wow, of protection itself. Un eh, informe reciente de UNCTAD. Consumer Protection Agencies concludes that AI can be instrumental in the optimization of these crucial systems. There is also the famous startup, Do Not Pay, <laughs> that many of you know which helps consumers deal with murky claims and invoices through the use of chat GPT. However, having said that, even as we recognize all these promises, and as I said before, we have to recognize the risks and the ethical considerations that AI brings. I would highlight two of these. First, there is the risk of being left out. Only 36% of the population in least developed countries is online. And the gender gap in internet use shows no sign of narrowing. AI will never be fair as long as over 3 billion people cannot access it. So the problem of the gap of the inequalities is still there. Second, there is the risk of abuse. The potential for AI to perpetuate and amplify biases and discrimination infringe open privacy, enable widespread scams and undermine democratic processes is a stark reminder of the ethical quagmire we must navigate. Deep fakes have the potential for misleading consumers on a mass scale. Today, it is already possible to have a deep fake celebrity promote deep fake product using deep fake videos and deep fake voices. So these risks highlight the imperative for a new generation of consumer protection policies and regulations. Policies designed to mitigate harm and ensure that the vast potential of AI benefits reach all consumers fairly and ethically. So dear friends at ANCTA, We've been busy unpacking the challenges and opportunities that AI holds for consumers. <clears throat> our, <clears throat> sorry, our informal working group on consumer protection in e-commerce already hosted two webinars in 2024. One was about AI risks and the other on how technology can better enforce consumer laws. So let me highlight four takeaways from these meetings. First, we need to empower both consumers and policymakers through AI literacy. It is no longer enough to know how to read and write and browse the web. We must also understand how AI systems learn, make decisions, and potentially influence our choices. And I say this, Elena, with a lot of humbleness, because 
when I went to a meeting of a management in the UN and we started to talk about AI, I realized we didn't have anybody in the administration of, <laughs> of UNCTAD that knew about AI in the application of, of our operations, for example. And I started to do this. Yes, so this is a reminder that we have to do this, that we have to bring this knowledge to our organizations, to our thinking, that we have to try to massify. <laughs> do you say that, that in English? I don't know. Or is a word that I have just made up <laughs> that to make more massive the understanding, it's a good word. <laughs> more popular, <laughs> to populate. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, the understanding of how this works. Second, we must support countries in developing national AI strategies that align with global principles, focusing on safeguarding consumer rights and fostering an environment where ethical AI can flourish. Thirdly, we must engage the private sector. A call upon technology companies to adopt ethical AI development practices, prior, making a priority of the consumer well-being and societal benefit over short-term gains. This includes committing to transparency and AI algorithm. I think that is a very important thing. We are talking also about regulations, so you know when something you are seeing is AI or real, <laughs> because we cannot distinguish, so the consumers need to be protected and have to be able to distinguish. And uh, obviously, uh, this, this means engaging in responsible data practices and actively seeking to mitigate biases. So we need to include the private sector here because the private sector is ahead of the curve, they know, and many times we don't know what is the right regulation or protection that we need if we don't understand deeply, you know, the sector and, and what is happening in the private sector. And fourthly, and lastly, we must advocate for a global framework of fair and responsible AI built uh, on the three pillars of transparency, accountability, and inclusivity. Transparency, accountability, and inclusivity. Transparency in AI algorithms and data practices. Accountability in AI developers and deployers so that they are responsible for the social impacts of their technologies. And inclusivity in both how AI is developed and in who can access it. All of these proposals must recognize the crude reality that there is a global governance deficit in AI. This is something that our Secretary General uh, of the UN, uh, Antonio Guterres, through the Summit of the Future, wants to change. The UN's unique mandate and membership means we must play a central role. I invite all of you here to submit your inputs to the UN High Level Advisory Board on AI to enrich its final report on the issue. And you know that as part of the negotiations with the member states within the UN, we are talking about the uh, uh, Global Digital Compact, the DGC. Now we have also an acronym for it. <laughs> so the Global Digital Compact is something important that we are going to discuss and hopefully agree in September when we go to the Summer of the Future. So let me just uh, finalize saying that, you know, history, teaches us that groundbreaking technologies always pose challenges alongside opportunities. From the steam engine to the internet, every era of innovation has demanded new rules, new safeguards, and new ways of thinking. 
AI is not different. What is different maybe is the speed of the change because there is no time <laughs> almost to adjust. We have to run. Rapid changes require rapid reactions. And just as previous, previous generations tackled their technological revolutions, we will have to work tirelessly to ensure that the AI revolution benefits all, that it doesn't leave anybody behind. And uh, we will have to work a lot together to partner, to cooperate, to understand, uh, to really make this our legacy. You know, the legacy of this technological advance that can be so beneficial and that we need to make it be beneficial for all. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Secretary General, for these. Thanks, thanks everyone for your patience in uh, in while we were preparing that video. Uh, would have you know, a, a very important and useful framing message, but also some some great takeaways there. And we're approaching the end of the session now, and I think we have one more person who's raised their hand, which is uh, Sharmila in uh, in Mumbai. Um, so we'll we'll go to Sharmila before Helena Laurent, our Director General, uh, will will close the session. So Sharmila, please tell us. Uh, what is your message on fair and responsible AI? If you can keep it brief as we aim to finish on time. Thank you. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you, Stefan. And greetings to all my uh, friends from World Across on the World Consumer Rights Day. Uh, uh, well, we are here with the AI, which we cannot deny. And uh, the baby is born. Now we have to take care of it. Uh, well, uh, we do have certain challenges. And uh, many of uh, the speakers have already spoken about it. Uh, so I would also like to highlight that there has to be a fairness with regard to, uh, you know, use of the AI in uh, whatever way it, it is used. It shouldn't be racist or it should not be used against uh, women as a class of consumers. And uh, it shouldn't be biased on the basis of the economic strata that the consumers have. Because uh, there we see uh, that, you know, there could be a price discrimination uh, for consumers who are able to uh, avail the platform of e-commerce. And as um, uh, the earlier speaker has said, not all are able to uh, access the internet. A uh, very uh, few percentage of the population is available on the net. So there could be a price discrimination. So there has to be a fairness in all uh, when the uh, AI is used. And of course, there has to be a transparency and accountability as to who would be responsible. If some uh, somebody has utilized a service or a product which is based on the um, AI technique, then who takes the responsibility uh, if something goes wrong? Will it be the AI platform or will it be the company? So who will be the uh, the responsible person? Who, ma'am, I uh, as a uh, as a consumer, a grief consumer, have to complain? So that's another issue which I wish to flag. And uh, of course, we also have to be uh, you know collaborative in our effort to deal with this issue. Uh, it is not a job of one uh, entity or one segment of the society, the uh, consumers, the creators of AI and the regulators, they have to come together and uh, they have to sail uh, together in order uh, to ensure that all of us are benefited and the bad actors are uh, kept aside. Uh, another point is that of privacy. Uh, now, when we are talking about privacy, we all there is also a requirement of personalization, giving personal experiences to the consumers. And uh, while doing this, we need to take care about the privacy issues also. Whether some uh, product or some use is given to the consumer, uh, whether the data is taken, whether the consumer's uh, consent has been taken, so all these things are the challenges that uh, all of us have to, uh, you know, uh, look at it and try to mitigate and try to find solutions. But then, yes, we should also look at it as an opportunity because uh, AI is definitely going to help us going for further. 
uh, it will be helpful uh, to detect the frauds and minimize the frauds. It can be used in a better way to give good experience to the consumers. And uh, also, AI can be uh, used to identify the fake content, uh, the pattern that is being used to defraud the consumers. So all these things are the opportunities that we should look at and we should progress. And uh, uh, while uh, as consumer organization, we also have to uh, support this movement, I, if I may call it, uh, the government also has to strengthen the policy. And uh, my uh, request or my suggestion is that we should have an international organization for uh, the AI uh, in the lines of what we have for the World Health Organization. So we should have an international organization for uh, artificial intelligence also because it is no longer an issue which is faced by a single country. This is a global issue and everybody has to face it. So this uh, having an international organization and I put my word uh, before uh, the UNCTAD and CI, please take it forward and uh, let us, uh, let us uh, go ahead and uh, have such organization where the deliberations can be uh, conducted and uh, uh, it will be top down approach. And also, Shamila, I, I understand. You, I understand you have a group for uh, e-commerce, but there should be a study group for AI separately. Also, thank yes. you very much for giving me this opportunity, Stefan. No, thank you, thank you, Shamila, for for your perspectives. Uh, and, and I'm sorry to to cut you off. We're at the end of the session, so uh, I really yeah, please, appreciate you. that you have joined late in India and and many of the others. Uh, yes, too. yes, I was attending the ministry program today. Whole day we had the consumer ministry program, so I just came in. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And thanks to all of you, uh, those of you that have joined early, that have joined late. We've heard from uh, all corners of the globe today, uh, from consumer advocates, from businesses. And I'm so grateful to all of you being here in celebration of this day together. I will hand over briefly to Helena Laurent, our Director General, to uh, close the session uh, and, and deliver a final message on this theme. Thank you so much, Stefan. Um, so it's wonderful to see everybody here today and it's such a pleasure hearing all of your activities and all of your energy. Um, for 40 years, Consumers International has brought together consumer advocates around the world um, on a, an important theme and timely theme every single year. And of course, this is about awareness, collaboration and celebration as well. On We've heard over the past four days um, in 2024 on the theme and raising our collective awareness for fair and responsible AI. Of course, consumer rights are important for the individual. Um, they protect everyone in the marketplace and make sure that their individual experience is fair, safe and sustainable. But at a broader level, and we've heard this year how much that is true, they can help change the marketplace as a whole and make sure that we are moving towards a brighter future. And at a time of historic change, this is so important. And we all need to be raising our hands and raising our voices around consumer rights. It's a time of collaboration. Um, all parts of the world have been represented over the past four days. Thank you so much for being here. And um, we know that significant issues such as AI, but also others on our change agenda can only be addressed if we work together. Um, we are excited that World Consumer Rights Day this year, as in past years, will be just the start of a, an exciting piece of work. And we hope that you stay with us on that, on our journey. And finally, in terms of celebration, um, it is truly a celebration and a time to uh, celebrate others. We celebrate the consumer advocates around the world who fight day in, day out for consumer rights. Thank you. And we know that your work is not easy, but it is so worthwhile and we support you. We celebrate our members. These are trusted leading consumer organizations all around the world. So important to us. Um, we thank you and we look forward to staying with you on this journey together. We thank our partners and celebrate those who are joining the consumer movement, recognizing its power to shape the future. And my personal thanks 
to the team, uh, the wonderful Consumers International team, and in particular, uh, uh, the individuals who have been uh, behind Cons World Consumer Rights Day 2024. That's, of course, Stefan, uh, Charlotte, Tamara, Javier, Orabile, uh, Holly, and um, uh, I believe I've covered, and Grace, of course. Uh, this is a group around the world who's been putting together a wonderful dialogue and debate series to enable us to learn and join hands around such an important topic. Very best wishes to everybody and uh, stay safe, stay well, and let's keep working together for not just fair and responsible AI, but for a safer, fairer marketplace and making sustainability the norm for everyone, everywhere. Thank you. Thank you.